Hey gang, and welcome to the Cyrano's Place channel. I'm Coach Cass, and today we're going to do the first of two installments on the map of fencing competitions. Today we're going to focus on the pool sheet, how to read it, how it's written down, and what you need to check as an athlete to make sure the numbers are correct. So grab your pencil, grab your calculator, grab a bout committee assistant, and let's go check out a pool sheet. Come on. Behind me is a basic score sheet. Once the bow committee figures out the pools, they'll print out the pool sheets and distribute them to the referees. You can see we put our names in here. Now the referee will take their pool sheet and check everyone in to make sure everybody's there, they've got their plastrons on, any equipment check has been taken care of, they've got the check IDs, and tell people where they are in the pool. Each fencer will have a number, depending on your ref, depending on the situation, they're going to call your fencer either by the name or by their number. They will start the pool as long as they have what they need to run it to conclusion. But once we've got the pool going, we know everything is fine, there is an order of bouts. You can see on the bottom of the sheet, we have the numbers. Depending on the number of people in the pool, as to what the order will be. So right now, we're running a pool of six, so this will be our order. The first bout to be fenced in a pool of six will be numbers one and two, in this case, Sasha and Alex. As Sasha and Alex are called on strip, the next bout, which is four and five, will be called on deck. What does on deck mean? It means like in a ship, you're on deck and ready to go, but you're not going yet. The third bout would be considered in the hole. In the hole is, again, a reference to being in a ship, where you're in the hole of a ship, waiting to get on deck, before doing what needs to be done. So the terms the referee is gonna call is on strip, on deck, and in the hole. Be ready to fence when the referee calls you on strip. Once the bout is fenced, the referee needs to write in the score. So we look at the score sheet. When fencer number one fences number two, and fencer number two fences number one, the score will go right here. If Sasha wins over Alex, five, three, we can put a V, mean five touches, and a score of three. Now here we've got the score between Sasha and Alex, fencer one versus fencer two, has three and all. But you'll notice we have a V next to the three. What happened, time ran out, the score was tied, and with one minute overtime, Sasha had priority and nobody scored. So Sasha won the bout. Yeah, she won the bout for three, maybe time ran out, maybe she scored that final touch. Another way we might write the score is by putting a hash mark dividing up the box in which the score is going. The score in which the fencer will make is on top, and V for victory, or D for defeat, will be written in. The key thing about writing in your score is to make sure, however it's written, it is clear to the bow committee what the score is. What you don't want to do is write in such a way that's confusing. You'll notice here that the score for both fencers are in both boxes. We can see with the V, they won 4-3, but that makes a very small amount of space very confusing. After the pool is complete, every athlete is responsible for signing next to their name on the pool sheet. What sign the score sheet says is they agree with how the scores are written on the score sheet. Each athlete should check it and make sure the referee hasn't by chance made a mistake, a human mistake, not an intentional mistake, and maybe inverts the scores. So, whereas Mara beat Joey here, maybe the referee wrote it backwards. At which point, when Mara and Joey go to sign the sheet, they better not sign it until they identify that this score was written in wrong. Because if they don't, it's gonna stay as is, and Mara, who should have had that victory, would be seated lower than she ought to based on her results. So, check that score sheet. Every athlete, even if they're in a Y10 event, and are seven years old, once they sign that score sheet, it's done. Parents can't sign for that child. That child is responsible for checking their sheet and making sure we don't have a mistake like this one. The first piece of information that discerns one fencer from another in terms of placement will be the victories. We're gonna count up the victories in this column. So we go across, Sasha has one, two, three, four victories as compared to Alex, who's got one, two, three, four victories also. So as you can see, 
we have ties with our victories. We have to figure out what makes one of these four victories superior to the other, and the same thing with these two victories. It's safe to say we can already tell that the person with th three victories will come out third in the pool, and the person with zero will come out sixth in the pool. The way in which we'll decide who is seated higher with four victories is through the number called an indicator. Indicator will go in this column. The indicator is the difference between hits sent and hits received. Hits sent is the number of times you hit your opponent. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 3 for Sasha. Now that we've counted up hits sent, we need to count up the hits received. Hits received is the number of times your opponent hit your fencer. Instead of hits sent, we're going for hits received, and that's going to be counting down. So we have 4, 1, 5, 10, 11. Now that we've added up the hits sent and the hits received, we can take the difference to find out the indicator. The hits sent minus the hits received equals a plus 12. We go down the line. One way to check your math, make sure you've done your indicator correctly, is when you add up all the numbers on the indicator, it should add up to zero. Now that we've added up the indicator, we can decide between a tie on victories with Alex and Sasha, who seeds first. You'll notice we have a plus 12 versus plus 7. Plus 12 is higher. 3 is the next most victories. Now we have a tie between Louis and Mara. We have minus 4 versus minus 5. And now we know what our complete pool is. Now the problem arises if this is not the only pool and you have a second pool with, say, seven fencers. In Sasha's case, she won four bouts out of five. Four out of five bouts. If we put that to a percentage, that's 800. Let's say Alex, instead of fencing five bouts, only fenced four bouts, and he had four out of four bouts. Well, that's a percentage of 1,000. What that means is if we do a percentage of the victories, we can compare results from somebody in a pool of five versus a pool of six and find out where they seed relative to each other, which will be important when we go to the direct elimination. So what this all boils down to is because our competition format is pools to direct elimination, your results in pools will influence where you seed in the direct elimination. And the direct elimination, if you win, great. If you lose, you're done format. Your indicator becomes crucial. Every touch becomes crucial. And even your initial seeding in pools becomes crucial. In our next fencing math video, we'll go over the theory behind seeding pools, how your ratings will affect that seeding, club affiliation, as well as the importance of that seeding coming out of the pool on national level or international level when your field is over 100 entries. So stay tuned. So I hope that clarifies how a pool sheet works and the math of it so as to help you next time you're able to fence your pool. So are you ready to fence again? Soon enough, we'll get on strip again, right? Now I hope you've enjoyed this and gotten something out of it. And I'd like to encourage you to be a patron of Cyrano's Place through our Patreon page. The link is below. For as little as $2 a month, you can help support us make these educational videos for you and other viewers to enjoy and learn from. Stay tuned for our second video on fencing math, which will include the seating to go into a pool and how that seating really gets effective in the direct elimination with the larger tournaments. So until next time, catch you later.